Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome up on stage Mr. Mohamed Zawari, who will talk to us about designing data architecture. All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, this introduction in the jungle. So, uh, as Roshi said, I'm leading the Snowflake team in the Middle East, Turkey, Africa. Um, I know that many people know already about Snowflake, but just to give you some highlights, we are in the UAE, in Dubai, managing all this region. And uh, we have a team of experts. We have a booth also, if you have some questions after the session. Uh, I'm very happy to be back here, the same place. Six months ago, we launched Snowflake on Azure UAE. So we are also running in the country. So for any regulated industry, we are also uh, uh, complying today with all the government entities, banks, telecom regulations to host your data. But I'm not here to talk about Snowflake. I'm here to talk about how to build uh, scalable and purposeful data architecture. So we heard some testimonies from customers. We just heard the session. The importance of the technology that can handle this data to achieve those business goals. And this is why I'm here today. But just before uh, starting, a couple of words at least on Snowflake. We just celebrated our 10 years anniversary. Uh, there is a surprise coming very soon in downtown uh, Dubai to, to do this. You will see the information about it, of course. But just to give you uh, a highlight on these 10 years where we are today, I will give you only one number. We just mentioned Google in the last presentation. Do you know how many Google searches are executed per day worldwide? Approximately, a number. In billions, of course. Sal? 100? OK, another? How many Google searches per day? How many billions? No, not trillions, not yet. <laughs> so actually, the last stats from this morning is 8.5 billion searches per day. Okay? Do you know how many queries are executed on Snowflake data platform worldwide per day? One figure. Anyone? 2.1 billion queries. This number will give you the massive importance of Snowflake as a data platform today. And we are growing 88% year over year. We just announced our Q2 results. Last year we grew 90%, this year 88%. So we are estimating that in five, six years, we will do more queries on Snowflake data platform than Google searches per day, which is definitely massive. So we are talking scalability. So I want to share with you this number in order then to have this credibility from you on why we are talking about scalability in Snowflake. OK, so we just uh, talked about uh, numbers in billions. In fact, the volume of data is exploding every day, and you know it. And uh, today we live in a hyper-connected ecosystem. Every interaction, in fact, we are doing results in massive data sets being generated. Okay? But uh, the problem is that this data is really spread across different silos and environments today. So. If we are talking internal data, you will find the data everywhere, in, in CRM, in ERP, in any source that you are using today for uh, finance, for IoT, etc. But it's not just about internal data. 87% of the decision makers want to use external data today in order to make real insights. This data is critical, because if you are using only internal data, Yes, you will understand your customers, you will see the churn, you will see the customer lifecycle value, but you will not know what the competition is doing, what the economy uh, and the external factors of the economy, what impacts they have on your business. So internal data and external data makes the equation even more complex. So 
In order to be able to get out of the silos, you need a scalable platform, an architecture that is designed for this new type of volumes, type of data. So, first of all, in order to build a scalable architecture, you need a one-stop shop. What's happening today in all the companies, and I'm sure you will recognize this in your own companies, is we have a spaghetti. Data is everywhere, and even when you say, I have already built a data lake, I have already built a data warehouse, the reality is there are a data lake, a data warehouse, a copy for data scientists, a backup, a gateway for external data, etc. You have six, seven, eight places where you have this data, even if you did a mature data journey. So you need one platform, and this platform has some requirements. First of all, it needs to be fast for any workload. Performance is non-negotiable. You need to deliver the speed, whatever and no matter the job is, whatever the volume of data is, okay, and whatever the number of jobs running are on a platform. This is the key foundation of a platform like this. Then it needs to just works. Your business today cannot afford any more manual interventions to make a platform running or to add the cluster at midnight because you're running out of sources. It needs to be automated and automated at scale. So from one side, you will optimize costs. From the other side, you will have the business continuity. And then it needs to be connected to what matters. As I just mentioned, external data is key. So it needs to really uh, have an extension and access to data outside of your four walls. And this experience of accessing external data needs to be as seamless as possible and, of course, secured also, because we are sharing, either consuming or receiving data, so it needs to be secured and well-governed. So what are the required capabilities for such platform? First of all, it needs an optimized storage. Then, on top of this storage, it needs an elastic performance engine to run those jobs. Then it needs to be done in an automated way. So you need an intelligent infrastructure in a SaaS model that do all the administration stuff for you. All of this needs to rely on a foundation of security, governance, and business continuity. And in the next part of the presentation, I will deep dive on each of those items to see why those uh, capabilities are required for such a platform. First of all, the storage. This is your landing zone where your data will be. So you need to be able to ingest any type of data, structure, semi-structure, unstructure, a video, an image, whatever. You need to ingest it, whatever the volume is. We saw at the beginning of the session today, exabytes. If you need to do and to deal with exabytes, this platform needs to be scalable enough to host exabytes. And you need to take data from everywhere. So today, of course, the cloud is accelerating, but majority of data sources are still on-premise. So you need to be able to take data from on-prem, you need to take data from the cloud, you need to take data from IoT, from OT, and also from external systems and from partners that you are working with. This storage also needs to be able to bridge the gap between the cloud and on-premise. So if you take the example of Snowflake, we are a cloud-based company. We are running two billion queries per day because we are in the cloud. At the same time, even if I mentioned, for example, for UAE, we are running on Azure UAE, this solves part of the equation, which is the data residency. But it doesn't solve the data sovereignty problem. And even in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, there will still be data on-premise. So this optimized storage needs also to be able, when needed, to get data from those on-premises storages and to bridge the gap for a compute of use cases on this optimized storage. Then, this storage needs to be flexible and interoperable. So it needs to sit on something that everyone is using, not on something proprietary. So if it sits on the cloud provider's technology, like AWS, Azure, and GCP, who are having more than 50% of the market today and it keeps growing, it will give the possibility to any customer around the world 
to use this optimized storage. Then on top of this storage, you need an elastic engine. I said that performance was non-negotiable. So you need to be able to run any number of overloads at any time without limitation, without concurrency, and without performance degradation. So the only way to do it is, first of all, to separate the storage from the compute, so the optimized storage from this elastic engine, and second, to separate all workloads, whether it is ingestion, visualization, data science, building application, data sharing, any workload that needs to run on this data platform needs to run on its own compute, its own cluster. So it will never impact any other one. But all of them, remember this is key, need to take the data and to tap into the data in the single store, which is the optimized storage. This will give you all the flexibility and scalability you need, and you can run thousands of users, thousands of jobs simultaneously without any concurrency, without any performance problem. Last but not least, it needs to be accessible. If you build such a platform and then you come with a new language of development or uh, something that is not really uh, common in the developer community or database community to be able to use it easily and to find the right resources, you will be stuck. You will be in shortage of resource and it will be a big problem. So one of the major uh, things in this elastic performance agent is to be able to run with very known languages like SQL, like Java, like Scala, like Python. All the developer community is using those languages. So if you have this engine running with those languages, you'll be able to find resources very easily, internally and externally. Then, you need an, a brain of this platform. You need an intelligent infrastructure that removes the hassle of the administration, of the backups, of the scalability uh, up and down. So it automates all the tasks that need to happen on behalf of you. So your business, when he is asking for a new requirement, you don't need to assess and to do capacity planning and to buy additional clusters and then to have the budget approved and then to install them and you lost six months. It needs to happen on the fly, in a second. You need this, you can run it, and you can run it for an affordable cost. And this is the game changer. You will be paying with those types of platforms what you are using per second. Exactly when you take your phone and you have a call for 32 seconds, you pay 32 seconds. Same principles here. You pay for what you use. So it's scalable enough to handle a huge amount of compute and workloads if needed, but at the same time it will be affordable because if, you don't, if, if a data scientist needs to run something and he needs 10 times the compute that he used to have before, in any other solution, it would be 10 times more expensive. And you need to provision it. In those type of platforms, it will cost the 32 seconds that he was using this workload for, and that's it. So it will be still affordable and in cents of dollars or dollars maximum. As I said, this needs to rely on a foundation of security governance and um, business continuity. So from a security perspective, we are dealing with data in the cloud. So this is the topic number one of such platforms. So security needs to be done at all levels. End-to-end -end encryption, there is no choice. The data needs to be encrypted from the moment it leaves the source. The storage is fully encrypted, strong authentication for the users of the platform, full auditing, everything needs to be tracked. And most of you have already CM tools or SOCs, so these audits need to be automatically ingested in those platforms. It needs to have a role-based access control, which is very deep at object level, so everything, uh, even the compute, can be controlled with roles. And also, you need to have options for quick recovery, because incidents happen, right? So those type of platforms will run on several availability zones and also on several regions, and we will see the business continuity side of it. 
From a governance perspective, this is also a very important topic because most of the customers, when you're on a data journey, they build the platform, they start use cases, and then they realize that they are lacking of a catalog, they are lacking of data quality, they are lacking of really re linking, for example, a dashboard to the source. This is something that is very important. And by knowing your data, there are several possibilities like tagging, classification, etc., and protecting your data at the same time, going at the raw level to give security, or doing data masking uh, on the fly, or conditional masking, or anonymization, or tokenization, all of those technologies and capabilities are really mandatory, because this platform, even if it starts small, it will grow, and at a certain point of time, will be the heart of the data strategy of the company. Last but not least, the global continuity. This is something also very important in order to be able to recover once there is an incident. Uh, we, every two, three months, we hear about an outage in Azure region or AWS region or Google region. So having a solution that is multi-cloud, multi-region, and the ability natively to replicate the data from one cloud region on one cloud provider to another cloud region on cloud provider is a game changer. And this can be done for petabytes of data without any human interaction. It's just done natively in the solution. Also, there is, when you have this global continuity, it opens the door for um, a global access when you are providing data. So there are a lot of providers today that are reaching by geography a certain type of customers. If they want a solution that reaches globally all the industry, for example, in finance or retail, having a solution which is multi-cloud, multi-region is definitely key. So, if you were dreaming about a solution answering all what we just saw in terms of architecture, the good news is it exists, it's Snowflake, and it's the data cloud. Instead of showing you an architecture of Snowflake and doing a sales pitch, etc., one image will be largely sufficient. This is a representation of Snowflake data cloud today. Every single point is a customer of Snowflake. All the interactions on the edge are one-to-one -one sharing. Okay? For example, Emirates just signed a partnership with United Airlines, both of them are Snowflake customers. This is a one-to-one -one share, because they are interested when they do co-share to share the data about, for example, the loyalty profiles of the customers, etc., the segmentation, so they can uh, target the right audience when they want to sell business class tickets or first class tickets. All what you see in the middle are providers on the Snowflake marketplace. So these are financial companies like Refinitiv, like FactSet. These are retail companies. Uh, these are data on COVID, on, uh, for example, weather, on logistics, on geolocalization. So there are almost 2,000 providers today. And the clusters that you see in the middle are customers of Snowflake using this provider on the marketplace in a seamless experience. You are a customer of Snowflake. You want the COVID-19 data, you search on the marketplace, you find it, you request it, you consume it. If I go back to the analogy I started with, with Google search, it's the same experience of Google search for data. When you search something, you go to Google, you search, you have results, and you consume the result. Exactly the same experience in Snowflake marketplace. You are looking for a data set, for example, fixed incomes in UAE, you go to Snowflake Marketplace, you search for it, you will find Prequin, you will find Experian, and you will find a third one, that all proposing data sets on um, this fixed income in UAE, and you click Request and you consume it. And the data is never moving. This is the key element. The data will always remain with the provider in his account, and you're having a view on this data, and you can query it, and you can query it jointly with your own data. Okay? 
So basically, again, analogy with Google, for example, a document on Google Drive. I'm not sending you anymore a document, okay? I am sharing with you a document on Google Drive. You can edit it if I give you the access. You can enrich it, so I can see the enriched data. It's exactly the same principle. And by the way, this is, according to McKinsey, a market of $3 trillion. The business impact of data sharing through the Snowflake Data Cloud was measured by McKinsey annual business value of $3 trillion. We are changing every day the business of our customers in all industries. So the collaboration in, data, in the data cloud is key. So you are a customer, you can either browse the marketplace, as I said, which is growing triple digit growth year over year. You can share across your business ecosystem. Okay, you want, it's like a marketplace, but in a private way. Let's say you are a Dubai Digital Authority. I, I talked about six months ago when uh, we, we launched Azure UAE here, we were with a Dubai Digital Authority discussing about this topic on stage. And you all know Pulse and the exchange of data. Imagine what would be the experience if all the entities working with Dubai Digital Authority, like RTA, like DIWA, like Dubai Police, are using this sharing ecosystem. Without moving any data, Everyone can tap into the other data that is shared by the other entities, enrich it instantly without moving the data and getting back a result. This is a game changer. You can also share with companies that are not yet on Snowflake, of course. So from a consumer side, I can consume the data even if I'm not yet on Snowflake. And something very important, uh, it's, it's a pattern that we released a few months ago. You can today analyze data without exposing it. And when I say analyze data, it's personal data, PII. You all know that cookies will disappear next year. Apple and Google declared the war to the cookies, and the traceability will be much harder next year. So in order really to find a workaround to this traceability issue, a lot of companies are trying to build new type of tools. What we build in Snowflake is something called global clean rooms. So instead of sharing in one-to-one, -one, if you do this, you cannot share PII data. I am a retailer, I am a bank. I would love to share data to enrich and to target customers, but I cannot. We build this clean room, which is a safe place where both entities, the retailer and the bank, can push the data we run queries, what we call double blind join. No one is able to see what's in it. Of course, there is a matching ID. It can be anything. And then each one will receive the enriched data. So each one can have actionable insights by sharing PII data without exposing them. So as an example, we started this journey with media companies. They were the first one asking for this. Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Stars, Hobo, all of them are Snowflake customers. And we have a lot of advertisers, the big uh, retail and CPG companies like Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Kraft Heinz, they are also Snowflake customers. So we started with Disney+, Plus. we built this product where Disney+, Plus can join the data with Coca-Cola, P&G, and others in a clean room and can target the right audience, for example, with advertisements. Uh, you are 40 years old, you have two kids, I will push you this advertisement when you are seeing this movie. So without any cookie, without any traceability, companies are building clean rooms on top of that today. So, I did it in the other way, usually I start with this slide, but we're talking technology, then we move to the business. I would like to finish with Snowflake innovations and why Snowflake is today the fastest growing company in the IT ever. 2014, we disrupted the analytics market. This was the start. We were born in the cloud and we created this architecture. I walked you through the principles and the requirements and the required capabilities, which is still unique today. No one did the job to create a data platform in the cloud natively. All the platforms that you will see in the cloud, including those 
of Microsoft, of Amazon, of Clo um, uh, Oracle, etc., are existing solutions that were shifted and lifted to the cloud. So they will never reach the scalability that I mentioned to you because they will not have this nativity in the cloud. The major disruption that we created, let's call it Snowflake 2.0, is about the data collaboration and the market of three trillion euros that I just mentioned to you. I can give you tons of examples on the collaboration, the aspect, how it impacts the business. I saw yesterday a webinar with uh, Kraft Heinz. So Kraft Heinz today are able to see in real time the stock of their products in all supermarkets in the US. They, removed, they reduced in six weeks the out of stock from 20% to 6%. Imagine the amount of business that is generated because you are walking in a Walmart in the US. You find the product or you don't find it. 14% reduction. In terms of business, it is billions of dollars of business just in six weeks. And we have tons of examples in all industries. But this is not the end of the innovations in Snowflake. We are keeping innovating. We just announced in our annual summit that we are now disrupting the application development space. So starting the end of this year, our customers will be able to build, deploy, and monetize applications into our marketplace. So it's not, yet, it's not anymore a data marketplace, now it's a marketplace. And with exactly the same experience than Apple. When you go to your iPhone or your iPad and download the application and use it, it will be the same experience. You are a Snowflake customer. You are looking for a fraud detection, for example, a model. Okay? Someone already built a fraud detection model, put it in an application on the Snowflake marketplace. In the click of a button, you download it. When I say you download it, in fact, you give the access to your Snowflake account to this application and it will run within your account. So there is no more any question of security, I am sharing data, I am sending data, I'm receiving data. This application will run natively into your Snowflake account, so it will use your data in input, and it will give you the output. So this is a new market, uh, but all of our customers are asking about those data applications. And we already have some uh, beta customers like Goldman Sachs, like ServiceNow, which is uh, the ITSM uh, platform on SaaS. They already built an application on this framework. This is really the future of the data. If you want to learn more, of course, I said we have a booth here. But you are all invited also to our Data Cloud World Tour, which is happening on October 25 in the Address Skyview. We'll have a full day of tracks to walk you through the data cloud journey for all the verticals, for finance, for media, for retail, for healthcare, with customers explaining why they selected Snowflake and also what is the future with Snowflake, which is related to the collaboration and the data applications. Thank you. If you have any question, I'm here to answer it. Thanks.